Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, I'm Nicole. Today I'm gonna walk you through step by step how I make my famous smoothie bowls. Now I've done a video on how to top smoothie bowls and different ways to decorate them. And I've also done a video on the secret to making them really thick. But I've never done a video on how to actually put together a smoothie bowl from start to finish. So today I'm gonna take you into my kitchen and we're gonna go step by step through that process. And I'm gonna show you exactly how I put together my smoothie bowls. First place we need to go is the freezer because actually 90% of the things in my smoothie bowls are frozen. That's the first tip. Okay, we need this, 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 and these. Okay, this is what I just pulled out of the freezer. We've got frozen mango, plain frozen pre-steamed cauliflower rice, this cubed dragon fruit. Sometimes I get this in packets, um, sliced bananas, and then organic butternut squash. These are all frozen. Having frozen fruits and vegetables in your smoothie bowl is like the number one most important trick and thing to do if you want that really thick consistency, almost like ice cream. If you use too much liquid or not a lot of frozen fruits and vegetables, you're not gonna get that texture. Usually at the grocery store, I get the dragon fruit packets. They come from a company called Pattaya Plus. Um, when I went this last time, they didn't have those though, and I've actually never seen these before, but this is cubed dragon fruit. It's just the regular Sprouts brand. I haven't used it before, so this will be new for me, but it's essentially the same thing. Um, they also have acai packets from Sambazon is usually the brand I see in grocery stores. I don't really like my smoothies and smoothie bowls too sweet. It's just a personal thing, which is why I use frozen vegetables in addition to my fruit, because in order to get that really thick consistency, you need to have more frozen things. So instead of adding more bananas or more mangoes, which have a lot of sugar, which can up your carbs, if that's something you're trying to watch, you can add the vegetables and like, Cauliflower is amazing because it doesn't taste like anything, but just adding that gives you tons more nutrients and vitamins, no flavor, and a lot of thickness in your smoothie. So this is a lifesaver if you're trying to get extra thickness, but you don't wanna add any more sugar from the fruit. Okay, so these are the fruits and vegetables I'm going to use. And I'm gonna do my pink smoothie bowl today. If I'm doing a green one, I usually add avocado, either regular or frozen, and spinach, and it turns it green, and it's a really cool color, and you can play around with adding different colors of fruits, which is also really fun. But today we're gonna do a pink one. Okay, now I'm also gonna get, um, this is unsweetened, vanilla cashew almond milk. I usually use just regular cashew milk. They didn't have it at the store this time, so I'm using almond milk this time. And then to add some protein, I always do some vanilla protein powder. This is an egg white one. Whatever kind of protein powder is your jam, or you don't have to add protein, but I always like to make sure I've got a well-balanced meal in my smoothie bowl. So I'll do the carbohydrates with the fruit, the protein with the protein powder, and then some type of nut butter for a fat. Okay, and now we have our toppings. You can't have a smoothie bowl without toppings, so this is the granola I use. It's one of my favorites. It's bare naked vanilla almond granola. So good. You can get this at the grocery store. Coconut shreds. You can put chia seeds on the top. Raspberries, any kind of fruit. Oh, I also have a banana. Here's my banana. Bananas are really great because you can slice them up and then use it to outline the side or make a line straight down the middle of your bowl. It kind of acts as a nice separator. So we're gonna use that. Now the blender I'm using for this smoothie bowl is my Ninja. I, if I had a preference, I would probably use a Vitamix, but they're really expensive and I don't have one of those right now. Um, so this is my Auto IQ Smooth Boost Ninja. I'll put the link in the description box down below if you're interested in seeing that. I use the personal cup that comes with it. And one thing I've discovered, so I've had this Ninja since college and it works really well. I've been really happy with the results it's given me. But recently my blades have gotten clogged. I almost think they've rusted on the inside and they've almost kind of been grinding. And the last time I made a smoothie bowl, it was so bad that like it start like water started coming out of it and it smelled really bad and I like thought this was gonna catch on fire. Not good. So I just went on Amazon and bought a refill of the blade and the cup. I didn't really need an extra cup, but it comes as a pack and now my blender works as good as new. So just as a note, if you have one of these, you might have to switch out the blade after a couple of years because I've had this for five years now and I just now had to switch the blade. So it lasts for a really long time. It works great now. I'm really happy with it. Okay, let's get started. You wanna add all your frozen things first. So we're gonna start with the mango. I'm gonna grab a nice handful of mango here. Plop it into my cup. Now we're gonna do sliced bananas. Going on in. Next is the dragon fruit. Since I've never done it like this before, you can see their little cubes. So I'm just gonna dump like 
maybe a handful. I'm gonna say half a cup. I never really measure when I do this. I just kind of guess. So I'm just gonna add a tiny bit more because it'll be really bright pink if we do that. Then just for some added texture, we're gonna do the vegetables. So we're gonna put a little bit of cauliflower rice in here. And then just to switch things up, we're gonna add some butternut squash. Okay, now that that's done, we're gonna add in our protein powder. Protein powder goes last. If you're making the green smoothie, this is where you would put the spinach in because it's the softest thing and that's the first thing that the blade hits. So you would do that there if you were doing spinach or any other type of non-frozen vegetable. We're just gonna put in a scoop of protein powder and a, just a little bit of milk. You don't wanna add too much milk. We're gonna start with that. You can always add milk, but you can't take away. Now we're gonna put our lid on just like this. You can see we just barely hit the max liquid line. You don't wanna go too far above that or else this won't blend good. So here's our smoothie. Okay, now it's time to blend. So we're gonna kinda of shake this down a little bit. Screw it on. Now this is the part where you kinda of have to be patient because, because everything's frozen and you want it to be thick it takes it a while to get blended up. You kind of have to play around and experiment with how much liquid to use. But like I said before, don't start with too much liquid because you can't go back. You can always add more liquid, but you can't take it away. So start with a little bit, see how it's blending up. Usually it just takes a couple times. You have to keep pulsing it to get it to fully blend. I mean, you have to be a little bit patient because it does take a while. But let's see how it goes. You can see it's already kind of stuck. Okay, it's already kind of stuck. So I'm just gonna take it off Ah, maybe if I can get it off. And then I'm just gonna shake it down a little bit, mix it up, and add just ah, add just a little bit more liquid. This is a messy business. Okay, I'm just gonna add a little bit more liquid here and blend. Same thing, take it off, shake it around, add some liquid. This is where the Vitamix comes in handy because it usually comes with that little puncher and you could stick it down and just kind of move things around while it's blending. This is when you have to stop and start it each time. Okay, you get a workout while you're doing it too, so you're working for your smoothie bowl. Here we go. There we go. Okay, it's done. Look how pretty. Oh my gosh. Okay, great. Now we're gonna take it off. And look, it's so thick that it's levitating. That means it's perfect, okay. Let's take this off, let her out. Oh my gosh, this looks so good, look. Okay, I'm gonna move the camera so that you can see me pouring it out. Here it comes, the smoothie. Oh my gosh, so thick, so beautiful. I'm not gonna fill it up too much because when you start putting the toppings in, I've had it overflow before, so we're just gonna do that. Oh, yes. I'm gonna put a little swirl in the middle, just like that. Now this next part has to move kind of quickly because the smoothie is already melting. So I'm gonna take my banana, I'm gonna cut it open, and I'm just gonna do a simple banana outline around the side. So to do that, I'm just gonna chop this banana like this in little slices. Sometimes you don't need the whole thing, but we're gonna do up to there. And we're gonna take our bowl, we're gonna grab the bananas and very gently lay them down. Kind of starting at one end, this is where it gets hard. Lay them down here and you can like slowly start to form a little circle. Yeah, just like that. The next thing we're gonna do is add some granola. We're just gonna put it on the inside of the banana swirl. Just a little bit at a time. You might get a couple strays, but that's okay. Perfect. Now we're going to add just a little bit of coconut shreds because everyone loves coconut and it's so, so beautiful on a smoothie bowl. Oh, I cannot get enough of these. Yes, ma'am. Okay, we're almost done, but not quite. I always love garnishing my smoothie bowls with some kind of berry. Today we're gonna use raspberries because I'm just gonna stick with the pink theme. I'm just gonna put a couple in line with that same curve we're making next to the coconut and the granola. Okay, we're almost done. This is just about ready to eat. Look how beautiful it is. Oh my gosh, it looks so, so good. Um, the one thing I do right before I eat it is either drizzle nut butter all over it or I just take a scoop and then plop it right in the middle of that extra space right there because smoothie bowls are 10,000 times better with nut butter. Um, my favorites are peanut butter, almond butter, you can use cashew butter, really any kind of butter will work. There's no way you can go wrong with this. Um, this is Justin's maple almond butter that I'll probably be using on my bowl. We're just gonna get a big, nice, juicy scoop of almond butter right here in the middle. 
Oh yeah. Mm. Yes, oh my gosh, look how beautiful this looks. Okay, first bite, here we go. It's so good. I don't know why I don't make these every day. Yum, okay, I'm gonna keep eating this, but I hope this was helpful and I hope this inspires you to get more creative with your smoothie bowls. I'm also gonna post a couple links to recipes that I have for different types of smoothie bowls if you wanna play around with some different flavors and colors. But let me know down in the comments below which one is your favorite, which one you're gonna try. I love hearing from you guys and seeing all your food creations. It makes me so happy, so please keep doing that. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. We've got a lot of fun things coming in the new year and I can't wait for you to be a part of it. In the meantime, you can find me on Instagram at Nicole the Nomad. And yeah, we'll see you next week. Thanks for joining. Bye. Thank you.